something that I, I wanted to ask you because there is, you know, the NFT, the Web3 IP integration in the show. Um, mm -hmm. How did you land on that? How did that happen? Well, it's really just uh, the premise concept. So I had bought an ape uh, back in June or July of 21, I guess it would have had to have been. Like whenever that launch happened, I came into him late, but still early compared to uh, the bulk of the world, or at least like the aware pop awareness. But I love the concept of this, um, that you had a collective of 10,000, all unique characters that you as a creator had the ability to build on, um, build on top of what they had built. So the Yuga Labs paid to develop an entire catalog of characters. They paid to develop a design structure, a mechanic, um, an idea. These apes became so rich that they became bored. That is a seed premise. So from there, you as a creator say, okay, well, this is an ape who is bored. Go. <laughs> right? And then my thought was, I didn't know if this would be a pseudonymous identity, if this would be some kind of Twitter alt persona, or if I would use it as a mascot, create like a, a brand around it. I didn't really have an idea. I just liked the hedge that I could buy a character that was part of a collective, but that I was responsible for defining all of the characteristics and qualities of. That's a, that's a really interesting idea. And as a creator, I pay designers all the time to create a character that we've already designed or uh, developed to like give me an aesthetic for a new icon. So, so the idea of paying for an artist's design that I could use for my own creativity, that wasn't alien to me. In fact, that seemed really really mainstream so but but the idea that no matter what you did with your ape it would always be referenced to this 10,000 uh, 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 asset collective that's the new idea that's the new bringing people together to crowdsource innovation that is where you get grassroots passion around a single concept where everyone is tasked with innovating on behalf of it so my interest in this whole space is more that the collective ideation and the group ownership of an intellectual property that is as big as anything else that makes money. Um, the problem is because crypto, because NFT is born out of crypto and because crypto is about money, you have these very competing thought processes in the space at the same time. And I don't know which one of them is going to gain position more quickly. There is the world of people addicted to making quick money, obsessed with stocks and viability and faith hedges. And then there is this entire other world of artists and free thinkers that are trying to shake up the way money actually works and how little uh, total observation is available in a personal financial space, which is very different than like when moon or pumping my art gobbler for 19 ETH. Like we're just talking about different things, guys. That's just not what I'm doing. I, I've collected a bunch of shit and I've, I've sold a couple things when it made sense to, but you know, go to my open sea. It's got 200 NFT in it. I'm not, the guy who's like coming into this space trying to make a bunch of quick money. Mm. So each of the projects that yeah, I've launched are built on that premise. The hard part is everybody's optimism about what's possible isn't quite reconciling with what's happening. You know what I mean? And a lot of what's hedging people into spending a ton of money isn't what's building new intellectual property that's going to ever compete with Disney. It's, it's, it is too firmly different ideas that are not working in Congress together that are never going to coincide. You bring up an interesting point. Oh, f first of all, like just with the uh, like origin of apes and everything, when I first got into NFTs, like my story is I first obviously got into crypto uh, and I was like heavily into like the meme coins and like all the alt coins like early last year when they were yeah. pumping. Just like shake um, up. So I was shake up internet stuff yeah, where you're like provocatively yeah, fucking with. It's all fight club. It, 
where everyone's just like, I don't know, maybe it burns. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so I, I, w I was like extremely interested with that. And then once I got into NFTs, like uh, I, m I remember seeing CryptoPunks and I thought they looked amazing. But uh, like I, I understood like the concept and idea of it. But I was just like, I don't know if this is necessarily something I would put money into because like I understand the concept. I don't know if like a lot of people would kind of catch on to this and I don't know if it'll have longevity. But once I once I remember like I faded apes when they were first shown to me when they're at like one ETH. I was like, this is stupid. I'm not going to get it. And then it wasn't until like a couple months later when they were like obviously like more expensive. So now it starts to make more sense to me. But I remember when I first read about like that initial like seed premise of, you know, these apes, like like their origin story, like they're living in they're like just bored. They made so much money off of crypto Swamp, and like everything. Like, nothing. Bar. Yeah, like. like <laughs> Exactly. Like, like I, I never I've never seen something that just like has like already a premise in place and it just like lets your imagination go wild. And so from that, that's when I first kind of got drawn into NFTs once I understood that concept. But it's an interesting point to hear of uh, like, I mean, you're a celebrity. You're like a, you're 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 a top celebrity, especially like in this space, like you're arguably one of the biggest celebrities here and one thing that we see with celebrities is that when they come into the space like their first mo is to just get a bag and like exploit the space and leave and so it's very refreshing to see you here and hear what you're talking about now because it's like that doesn't seem to be the case um and so i kind of want to just like get a little bit more of like your origin story into web3 as a sure. whole like when did you get into crypto what like what was your first nft like how did you like what made sense to you from to going like one finding crypto and then going into nfts i should emphasize i don't care about crypto like I appreciate the concept of um, decentralized banking and I absolutely appreciate the lack of governmental oversight in your finances that's capable with the anonymity of crypto, but the world of NFT founders, creators trying to launch projects and still remaining anonymous, it is absolutely the opposite of the foundations of crypto. So m my interest is less about advocating for decentralized banking uh, than it is recognizing a new way to globally crowdsource innovation around a singular intellectual property. I love bringing people together around entertainment. Um, I've been interested in art and uh, genre subculture stuff for as long as I've been aware. Um, it's inevitable that I, as a creator, get involved in all of these spaces because they are where the new shit is happening and I'm always going to be attracted to that. Um, you know, like most people, it was Steve Aoki who got me into NFT. <laughs> and, uh, it was just the that. Goats. They approached, uh, uh, we were working with Steve and, and uh, Matt Cologne and they wanted to develop an on-chain um, entertainment property and Steve had built this uh, character X concept and wanted to develop it into a Dominion X concept and so that was when we started talking about NFT while we were developing that project he said oh it was the Sotheby's thing so I had seen people sell at Sotheby's for real money and all of a sudden the category of NFT crossed into art and collectibles so you're no longer talking about new format digital currency. You're talking about a new format of art and collectibles. And anybody that knows me knows I'm into art and collectibles. Um, Steve was the one who said, oh, you should check out this board Ape project. And I did. And I had, there were so many available that I could cast. And I was like, oh, this guy I was actually uh, Chris Waters, our head of development at SBS. He was the one who was like, I don't know, I kind of love this guy with the bone tea and the halo. And I was like, oh shit, bone tea halo. That is a character. Skelly T halo. Halloween, good guy. Maybe spooky, not gonna fuck you over. I was like, oh, this is a perfect great, duality. This is a great character. So I bought it, I bought it. And then I sat on it for a while. Um, and I think it was January. Yeah, because I had already been able to mutate him, get the vial and everything. And then it was January before I came up with the idea to make this show. Um, 
but I think it was December, like December of 21, I set up an anonymous profile that had the ape in it. And I went looking at other projects. Cause I was like, oh, there's some cool shit out here. And I went after every, anything that had open and intellectual property usage, open license capability, anything that looked like a character to me. I kind of went casting. I was like, oh, this is fun. And then I thought about a world, not where the premise of the show is it's all NFT. It's not drawn together. You know what I mean? It's not, it didn't feel like that was the point. It felt like I could make characters out of any of these art pieces that I loved and not limit it to just NFT. Like the whole point was to make a character, right? You don't love Mickey Mouse because he looks the way he does. You love Mickey Mouse because all the shit he makes you feel. And he makes you feel stuff because you've shared experiences or adventures with him or even been able to witness his point of view, his sense of humor. That's what makes you love a character. So I do see that a lot. People putting out 10,000 PFP collections and expecting them to just sell, but like, to who? <laughs> I keep people yeah. th uh, seeing people say, well, uh, th these kind of ideas can sell. What about this idea? And fundamentally missing the point of why it attracted the audience's attention in the first place. So I, I do think just to, just to um, diverge for a second, there's such a saturation in this marketplace from the people who've misunderstood the potential application or even bad actors just trying to make a ton of money. The, the space is so saturated that it's going to be a minute before any of these IP really rise in strength because of the support of their fans. I started going to San Diego Comic-Con in 94. And it wasn't until 2008 that any of that intellectual property had become popular or supported enough in a grassroots way that any of the studios or networks thought that it would make money in a larger form if they just invested in it. NFT is kind of in the same space. There's no proof that anybody outside of the NFT world gives a fuck about any of these characters. If I, if I talk to people about my show starring a bored ape, it's almost, it's, it's almost, um, it, it, it almost works against it because they have such a preconceived notion about what NFT means and nobody's quite proven where the applications are for modern entertainment.